if I look like I'm blind, it's just because it's really sunny. This is the only way I could light my face in a good way. That's me. Hi everyone. I'm back. Welcome back to my YouTube art channel. I hope you enjoyed the new space. I'm gonna be trying out different spaces with the videos I make because I don't know yet where I want my definite space to be. You can still hear the dogs. It's still a local thing. They're, they still don't shut up when I try to record. You may hear some cars as well because it's not right next to my window and my window faces the, the road. This will be my first video. Like my first channel video. It's not a vlog anymore. It's not about the residency anymore. And for my first video, I thought it would be a good idea to react to some old work. I think I can make this a series in the channel, so I'll just take it step by step. And today I'll be reacting to some work I did when I was around 10, between 10 and 14, 13 years old. Obviously I've made way more things than this during that time, but I don't want this video to be too long, so I just picked, I think, five or six things to react to. So without further ado, let's just do it. <laughs> So this first painting that I'm showing you is, I guess you could call it a reinterpretation of Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Yeah, what was I going for with this? So this was a school assignment, obviously, I didn't just wake up and decided I want to reimagine what Mona Lisa would have looked like if she was a sea creature monster with algae hair? I don't know what that is. I was around 10, 11 years old when I painted this. It's not my first painting, I'll be showing you my first painting sometime, not today. And I think I was going for just because I live on an island, I've always been attracted to the ocean. I think that's it really that I try to do here. I don't really understand why she's orange. You know when we are young we don't really realize how to make white skin tone. We just try to make orange and yellow and red and white and then it's pink and then it's not pink and then it's orange again and it's just a mess. I don't think I did any research for this to be honest. I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna make her mouth warm. I'm sure there's worms under the sea, I don't know, maybe. I've never been there. Worm. Fun fact about this work, it wasn't me who finished it. So we had to leave school because it was the last day and we hadn't finished the work, but the work needed, needed to go to a small exhibition in the school. So our two teachers, those two teachers decided to finish it for us and I was not happy about it. I'm still not happy about it. I don't think ha I have anything else to say about this. So let's just move on. <laughs> This is, in fact, <laughs> my first try at a self-portrait. Yes, it is. Okay, so let's, uh, let's examine this, shall we? I've always had this thing of making eyes that are too big for the face. I still do it whenever I try and draw the human figure. And I, th I mean, for a first try, you know, the proportions and everything, I think they're, they're all right. They could be worse. Again, I, I think I was like 10 or 11 years old when I did this. I wish I could have that jawline though. It's quite a uh, sharp. I never had that chin in my life. My nose could certainly use some plastic surgery. That would be good. My ears are quite big, like huge, they're <laughs> huge in there. Don't judge me, I used to have the Bieber haircut before Bieber was even a thing. I'm pretty sure that nose, it wasn't me who drew it, it was one of the teachers. That mouth is just a whole, that is just a huge mouth. It looks like a trout mouth, like a fish mouth. It's just not good. And then my eyebrows, it's, I don't know what's happening in there. This is the photo I used to do it. Again, I need to remind you I was around 11 years old. And yes, I did go through a fat stage, let's just ignore that. I'm clearly missing some hair. The glasses are something special. They truly are special. I don't really understand what's that whole thing around the face, those lines. I don't know what that was supposed to be. I guess it was the, the placing of the mouth and the nose. It's just a lot of lines for a face, I don't know. Moving on to the next one. <laughs> 
I don't know if you did this when you were younger, but when you learn how to draw the human figure, they give you like cutouts of a magazine and you have to complete them. That's basically what I did here. I don't know who this model is, but I'm already sorry to her. I mean, it's a good attempt. I'll give it to myself. I'll give it to my 11, 12 year old self. It was a good attempt. You go, kid. I don't really understand what's going on with the face. I tried my best. Again, I was really bad with hair. I don't understand what happened with the hair. Where is it? Where is the hair? In terms of the face, it isn't that bad. That eye is quite big, but it's quite expressive. I actually like it a lot. That nose, again, I don't know how to make noses. That eyebrow is definitely fierce. The ear again just looks like a piece of bread glued on with hot glue. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Next one. This is the same exercise that the last one. This is the same drawing exercise. That left leg is just bad. It's really, really bad. I don't know what happened there. Maybe a surgery gone wrong. He tried to reattach a leg and they reattached someone else's leg. That left arm as well. I mean, just go to the gym. Try and have your arms balanced. There was this show that I used to watch when I was little. English people know it. In the UK it's really well known, but in Portugal it's not that well known. I only had a few friends that watched it. I don't know if, you, if you've heard about the tweenies. He looks like a tweenie. He's the guy that you would expect was orange or blue or green or purple. He's just a really weird little man, isn't he? I like the t-shirt though. I really like that t-shirt. These hands... I was never good at drawing hands, like, ever. I still am not. I'm not good at drawing hands at all. These look like sausages. Those nails are just not good. Kind of looks like those mushrooms that grow in the wild, you know, those really thin ones. This face now will give me nightmares. I'm sorry to this model, actor, I don't know what he was, is, he may still be alive, I don't know. I have no words to describe it, so... I'm just gonna move on and accept that was how I used to draw. Again, I don't understand why I used so many lines. What what is what is what is going on with these lines? What are they marking? What is happening here? Why are there so many lines? <laughs> Moving on. I hope you're ready for this next one that I'm gonna show you. To give you some background to what this is, you know when your art teacher asks you to draw a, some sort of comic book thing and you just have to do it even though you're not keen on doing it. Don't get me wrong, I admire everyone that likes comic books and that makes them, I think it's an art, I really do, but I ju I'm just not good at it. I don't enjoy doing it and I was forced to do this and this is my, if it's not my first, it's one of my first and last comic book things. This right here is the front page and this is called an artistic dream. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. I'm sure you can guess what it's about by now. As you can see, the first page was handmade. I'm pretty sure I used up my orange pencil for this. At the same time I wanted to make it by hand, I was really not having it. So I just came up with this excuse to my teacher and I was like, can I just use paint to do it? Can I just go digitally? So let me take you on this journey through my skills in paint. Paint the program. This is the page that goes after the front page. And what it says is, once upon a time in a far off kingdom where it reigned a family whose last name was Matisse. If you don't know the artist Henry Matisse, that's who I took inspiration from. This castle is definitely something really... I see they have some bricks sustaining the whole thing and just three windows in a really big castle with a really small door. I think I only knew how to use the paint bucket and the spray tool and the shapes and like the shape tool, but that was, that was about it. And then the next page is a museum. And what it says is this family whose last name is Matisse, don't forget that because that's really important for the story and for the plot. This family liked paintings a lot and they had a museum in the village. So apparently it's a village now. We went from a castle in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of trees and three windows and one door and like five bricks 
to a village. And they had a museum in the village where they went to every day to watch their favorite painting, The King's Sorrows, or The Sorrows of the King. There's a lot of names for this painting by Matisse. I just want to evaluate everything that's happening right now in this story. So we went from just a castle in the middle of nowhere to a really high-end museum. Like, really, this architecture really screams modern. Steel, glass, but then again, wooden doors and a wooden sign. I don't really know why. Maybe it's copper. I just want you to really take this in, how we change scenarios that quickly. So we go inside this museum now, and we just we, we just met this weird king that's in there, like in the middle of a crowd, and they're all wearing the same clothes. I don't know why. And they're just yelling at the king and saying, oh, 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 like there's Santa Claus or something. I don't know. And we can read down below, the king is missing. Let me tell you a story about this little king. This king is not actually a king. I'm not sure how much research I did for this, but in this painting, Matisse, this is one of his last, or what, or actually his last self-portrait that he made before he died. I thought this figure that's missing was the king, but that character isn't the king. That is Matisse. That is his self-portrait playing uh, some sort of viola or guitar. And I just assumed for this story and for the sake of this story that that character was a king. And so you can read in the bottom that the king vanished. And you can see Mona Lisa right next to it. Again, Mona Lisa making an appearance. And you might wonder, why is she defaced like that? Who did that ginormous atrocity to such a well-known painting? It was me. I'm not proud of it, but I was going through a stage at that point. I thought I was going to be some sort of illustrator, just making these characters with like really big red noses and round eyes and... Anyway, going back to the story, the little Matisse, which I'm assuming they're the king's sons, they're all siblings, and they're all wearing pretty modern clothes for their time, but I'm not even gonna say anything about that because we just threw history right out the window. So they went through this really modern door that's next to a really old window, and it just says they went looking for the king. Let's see what happens next. I don't know, it might be a big surprise, it might not. Remember, this is a story that was told by someone who was 11, 12, or 13 years old. This is the end of the story. It's one of those really original endings where everything was just a dream. I guess we all had to go through that stage where we just write a story, and it's such a weird story that the end is just... Oh, and it turns out, it was all a dream. Now, I do have to say I'm glad this was a dream because the history of everything, the context, it was just all wrong, the architecture was wrong, the kings were wrong, I don't understand where I got this idea from, but it turns out it was just a dream, so it's okay. Apparently they're sleeping on the floor, they don't have bodies at all, they're just it's just their head. And by the way, those pillows look really uncomfortable, so it's no surprise they're having these weird dreams. <laughs> And just to finalize this journey through time, I thought this would be a great drawing. This is one of those drawings that you wonder, what was going on in their heads? This was one of those occasions where, I don't know if this exists worldwide, but in Portugal, when teachers are just too tired to give you an assignment or to just deal with you in general, they say, just make a free drawing. And as a student, you make a lot of free drawings, and Portuguese people know what I'm talking about. For this particular drawing, I decided I was going to pick up a leaf, draw it, and then make something out of it. It's a really cool idea. I've seen a lot of good things done from that simple idea. I think it was around Christmas when I made this, and that's Virgin Mary, if you're wondering. And then there's fish beneath it. I think that's a fish. It's some sort of creature that has a mouth and eyes. Aww. And that was it. That was me going through three, four, five years of my artistic journey. Let me know if you like these kinds of videos where I react to things in the comments below. I really enjoyed reacting to old work. When I was collecting the work, I tried not to look at it for too long, so I had spontaneous opinions about it. I really hope you enjoyed my reactions. I hope you enjoyed my first video for the channel that's not related to the residency. If you did, like it, subscribe for more. Let me know if you have any ideas that you want me to experiment with in the channel. And as always, be happy, keep creating, and keep your hopes up because you never know when things might happen. Bye guys.
I just want to say after this reaction video that you don't have to feel bad for the way you draw or you used to draw because art is about the journey, it's about learning new things every single day and practicing, practicing, practicing until you get better. 